All right, so now I'll talk about the major programs that they have. There's, um, so the Animal Birth Control, or ABC, is the, the main project to try to spay all the dogs in the area. And they also do rescue and treatment for dogs that are in bad shape. And they have a, a public education program, too. So, um, yeah, so with this ABC program, it's, it's just not feasible to try to get rid of all of these dogs. And uh, almost no Nepali people adopt dogs. You know, when, it, when a Nepali family gets a dog, it's typically a, a fluffy little purebred dog, and they're just not interested in mutts or, or larger dogs. So um, sometimes some Western people who live in Kathmandu will adopt a dog, but that doesn't happen too often. So, um, so adoption is not the answer to this. You know, instead, they're trying to see the street dogs as part of the community of Kathmandu instead of trying to get rid of them. So uh, on a typical day, they'll uh, go out around 5 in the morning to avoid traffic and go to a certain neighborhood and pick up any, any dogs they can find. And um, they bring them back to the... Oh, they also uh, hand out flyers to people to educate people about what they're doing and why they're doing it and how to act safely around dogs and how to avoid getting bitten, which you know, reduces the chance of rabies. So they bring these dogs back to the cat center. Um, they keep them for about a day. Well, they, the females, they just pick up females typically. And so some of these dogs get, are getting fed for the first time in their lives. And they stay in the kennels for a day. And then they, um, they get spayed. And then they recover for a few days. And... Um, it's an odd spay incision. They go in... Yeah, they call it side flank spaying. I, I don't know much about it or about the pros and cons, but I know in, in other parts of Asia too, where they, where people are spaying dogs on a large scale, this is the way they do it. Yeah, I, I can't tell you anything more about it than that. And uh, yeah, and then after the dogs have, been, have recovered for a couple of days, they get checked out by a vet, and if they're doing well, they're brought back to their own territory. And because the dogs are dropped back right on the territory that they were on, they can still defend that territory and keep unsterilized dogs from moving into it. So, um... Well, it's interesting that management of street dogs was before... Oh, that's their, their motto. It's a humane management of street dogs for community benefit. Yeah, and this has been extremely effective. They, um... Let's see. Yeah, they've... they've sp they spay uh, 100 to 120 dogs per month. And in just four years, they've sterilized and vaccinated against rabies over 6,000 dogs, and uh, mostly female. And they also, they, whenever they spay a dog, they put a notch in one ear and a tattoo in the other, and the fully grown dogs get a red collar so that they can easily identify them later, so they know who they've spayed and who they haven't. So, uh, And this is that map of the Kathmandu Valley again. So, so within the ring road, in that urban part in the middle, they've already uh, spayed about 40% of the female dogs. So they've, they've made a huge impact already. And you can really see it just walking around in the, in the neighborhoods where that cat is covered. Just the dogs are healthier. There aren't so many skinny dogs. Um, people have a more friendly attitude towards the dogs. And then compared to like where I was living, where cat is sort of on the other side of the city that cat hadn't gotten to yet. And, uh, yeah, and they're just, it's, things are a lot, both people's attitudes towards the dogs and the health of the dogs is noticeably worse. So, uh, so this animal birth control is their main program because it has a large and sustained impact for a pretty small expense. But of course they get some dogs that need more uh, serious treatment. And so, so those dogs go into the, their rescue and treatment program. And uh, most of the dogs that get into this program they are dogs they pick up when they're out on, on an ABC run. But they do get phone calls from people saying, there's this really sick dog outside of my house, or I just saw a dog get hit by a car. And, uh, and so some, some of these pictures may be disturbing, so I'll just warn you about that. So um, yeah, and, and the dogs in the rescue and treatment program are there for a, a range of reasons. Some of them are, uh, are severely malnourished. Um, some of them have calcium deficiency that causes really bad limb problems. Um, this dog just had awful mats. And a, a lot of dogs get hit by cars there. Um, and, some, and people do injure these dogs too. It looks like this one was cut by a knife. And yeah, it's, it's pretty awful. And it looks like someone put a makeshift collar on this dog when it was a puppy and then they neg neglected it. And, uh, 
yeah, the dog grew and the collar didn't. And um, yeah, and some of the dogs just have a ridiculous mange. It's, yeah, some of these dogs are in really bad shape. So what are the treatment options when they encounter these animals? Um, I don't know a lot of the details with the medical side of it, but the first thing is they need to decide if they're going to treat the dog or not. And uh, if, and there, there's a, well, actually I'll, I'll get into the details of that later. But I mean, I know for a lot of, you know, a lot of the things aren't, they look really bad, but you know, with mange, if you treat it after over some time, the dog does heal, its fur grows back, and it can be brought, put back on the street again. It really depends on what, what the animal has. And do you have like a, something more specific? No, I, I guess I'm wondering if they do try and treat them, or yeah. is euthanasia an option? Yeah, euthanasia happens a lot, unfortunately. Okay. A lot of, they just don't have the resources to take care of all the dogs that need help. So, yeah, and the, the puppies, a lot of puppies get euthanized too, because uh, puppies just have a really hard time because they can't defend a territory. They have a hard time finding food, so sometimes, you know, someone would go out to pick up some dogs to spay, they'd come back with a bunch of puppies that somebody had found climbing around on a pile of trash, and, uh, and they, they just don't have the resources to raise a bunch of puppies, and there's a, almost no chance of them getting adopted, so yeah, they, they euthanize a lot of puppies there. And, uh, oh yeah, and this dog, they, they shaved it, so you can really see these open sores that get infected, and they, they just never heal. Um, all right, so I think there are some more grizzly pictures, but these all have happy endings. So I don't know if that makes it a little easier. But yeah, this is one dog that came in with, uh, you know, just more infected sores. And um, so they anesthetized it, they cleaned it up. It looks like they've covered it in iodine here and, uh, you know, cleaned out all these wounds. And, um, you know, they, and they, after surgery, they just leave the dogs out in the sun to recover from the anesthesia because they don't really have anything else to do, any, any other space for them. And then the dog was fine. You know, eventually its fur grew back and it was doing all right. So, so some of the treatment really does help. And um, so if possible, they'll return a dog to its own territory. And, uh, but sometimes with these dogs, some of these dogs are just never going to be able to survive on the streets again. And, uh, so these become their in-house dogs, or the, the resident dogs. And they always have kind of more in-house dogs than they really have room for. And it's always a tough decision. And, and so few of these dogs get adopted that it's, it's always a tough decision. You know, when a dog comes in and they think, well, if we're confident that we can treat this dog and it'll be back on the streets living the way it was, we can definitely treat it. But if it might never recover or if it might need so many months of treatment that it's if some other dog is going to take its territory and then it won't have any place to find food, then, uh, yeah, then they might have to decide to euthanize it. So, um, yeah, so I want to introduce you to some of their in-house dogs. Uh, this one, Jen, Sal Jen Salter picked this one up herself, and this dog was, like, completely bald with mange, and it got possibly the first bath of its life, and it turned into a, a Tibetan terrier. Like, no one had any idea what kind of dog it was. So now, th this is Mango, and uh, he's sort of the, the cat center mascot. And, uh, oh, this one is Django. He's a Tibetan Mastiff, or at least part. And he, is a, he was somebody's pet and was abandoned. And he has a paralyzed leg, but you, you almost wouldn't even know. He runs around and plays with the other dogs. Like, you, you almost can't tell that he's only running on three legs. Here's another dog they picked. I think this one, the pictures pretty much tell the story. And that's who it turned into. And, uh, oh, and this dog is a paraplegic. And so uh, she just sort of scoots around on her backside. And um, I mean, it's, I'm sure life's not easy for her, but it's better here than it is probably anywhere else in Nepal. So she, she does all right. Let's see. Here's another one that, uh, yeah, you see this dog is just basically bald from mange. And then they cleaned her up and, yeah, and she ended up as this beautiful dog. <laughs>